Hey guys, welcome back to our Side Hustle series where we interview individuals who come on and talk about how they use their passion and skills to make extra income. Stay tuned for more. Guys, we are going out of state. Once again, we're going across the country. We can't really stay in Pennsylvania, it seems. Um, we're going to San Diego, California. Um, I'm really excited to announce um, my guest is Jeremy Schneider from Personal Finance Club. Um, Jeremy has quite the resume. He has quite the background. He has quite the story. I know you guys are going to be so impressed and are going to um, really get a lot out of this interview. Um, if I were to describe Jeremy, I would describe him as a personal finance nerd, incredibly frugal, uh, incredibly smart. He, like I said, he already he lives in San Diego, California. Um, so without any further ado, hey Jeremy, thanks for joining me today. Hey Sean, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on today. I started following Jeremy several years ago on social media, um, and because he just has this really cool story. And I already had a passion for finance, but it kind of just um, helped that take off and was definitely one of the reasons I started to do what I'm um, kind of doing on here in my free time. But uh, Jeremy, if you don't mind, just let us know more about yourself, uh, maybe what your typical day looks like. Sure. So my name is Jeremy Schneider. I'm the founder of Personal Finance Club. Um, a bit of my story is, is that I started an internet company when I was in college, and I grew that for about 12 years until I, the age of... Um, 34, and at which point I sold my company for $5 million. I worked for that company for two more years, and then I quit that job. So at the age of 36, I was retired, and I haven't really had a normal full-time job since. Um, I spend my days working on Personal Finance Club, where I help, help people learn about personal finance and investing. Um, I'm also working on starting a new company right now. I coach high school beach volleyball. I hike and work out and uh, do photography and hang out. I don't know, my days are pretty unstructured, but I'm doing a lot of stuff that I like to do. I love that you're at the point where you're able to just do the things that you like to do. Um, and so that's great and you've really set yourself up for that. There's so many things I wanna get into, um, especially that whole th deal with selling your business for $5 million at the age of 34. I'm not even 34 yet, I'm 33. I can't even imagine having $5 million in the bank at, at this point. Um, but Let's kind of, we'll come back to that. Um, I'm a high school phys ed teacher. There may be a few students out there watching this, who knows, just for anyone. Um, what's something you know now that you wish you knew when you were back in high school? I think the big lesson I've learned from real life is that I kind of had wrong in high school is I thought that, when I was in high school, I thought that being successful was about being naturally talented and not having to work very hard and having a lot of success come to you and that is not how the real world works. The real world is the people who hustle and work the hardest are the most successful. And so I was kind of like a books, like a smart kid in high school. And there were some people who just tried really hard. And I was like, oh, they're tryhards. That's not cool to have to work that hard. But those are the type of people who in real life just keep driving and keep learning and keep succeeding and keep figuring stuff out. And if you keep pushing over and over and over like that over long periods of time, you become super successful. And so I think that that's the misnomer, that if you just kind of let things come to you easily, that's how you find success. But in reality, the real world, world doesn't recognize laziness. It recognizes hard work over long periods of time. All right, guys, did you hear that? If you're a high school or college student or really anyone, like once again, um, don't be lazy, especially during this quarantine time. Um, get out there and do some things. I know a lot of people think that um, it, they just think that things don't matter right now. Um, they think the, the real world's a long ways away, um, but it clearly does. So let's kind of just go back. I know people that maybe don't know you. Um, let's talk about your renovated garage that you used to live in. Um, and I know you recently bought a place of your own, um, but why did you live in the renovated garage and um, how has that transition been to the new place that you're now in? My entire life up until about two months ago, I was a renter. I was living in a garage that belonged to my friends. I was converted to a pretty nice apartment. The garage thing is a little bit of a like fake deprecation of her. Um, 
But yeah, I finally decided to buy a condo, which is very nice. You can see it behind me. Um, I did it for every reason except financial reasons. I think that this has been a terrible financial decision. It's very expensive. My monthly expenses have gone up despite not having a mortgage. I bought this condo in cash, but between property tax, utilities, insurance, maintenance, all the stuff that you have to pay for, even if you own the home outright, it adds up to more than my rent was, which is crazy. Um, so, but I did it because I wanted to have a guest room, I wanted to live closer to the water, and I wanted a little bit of a nicer place, and I was getting older, and I didn't want to live in a garage my whole life, and so I wanted nice things for myself, the same reasons everyone else did, and I could afford it, which is why I made the decision, but generally, it's been a terrible financial decision. <laughs> I can totally understand that. Not that I live in San Diego, but I know it is incredibly expensive to live there. Um, Tell us a little more about your dealings with real estate. Uh, I know real estate was part of your original business um, that you sold. What other opportunities are there with real estate that you're working on? Sure, so I really think there's kind of two best things to invest in. One is index funds, which is basically buying the entire stock market. And the other is investment real estate. And I say investment real estate to differentiate from primary residence. This place you look at behind me is not making me any money. It's costing me a lot of money. It is not an investment, it's a liability. Um, but I do own another property with a friend um, that's an Airbnb, and so we have renters in there all the time up until this coronavirus thing, but we're gonna get through that and we're, it's gonna come back. Um, I also have a few other investments in new construction properties around the country. Um, and the goal of all these things is to have people paying you money and so that you collect rent and you collect income from the property and then you maybe sell it one day and then also to take advantage of the appreciation of the property over that time. So you're not getting any rental income off your new property? Oh, and no, I'm not house hacking or I'm not able to make, or I'm choosing to not make any rental income off my place. I do have a separate room, so I could rent it out and have a roommate or I could Airbnb it or something when I left. But I've made a decision that this is money that I'm spending. This isn't an investment that I'm just gonna live here. I can afford it, but with all my other money, I'm investing it so my money will grow while this home is just something that I'm keeping for myself to enjoy. That's great that you're able to just enjoy it yourself, but you also have that option of Airbnb if it ever got to that point. Um, I know I've mentioned this before, but I think you have one of the best personal finance club um, Instagrams out there. Um, and so I learned so much about it. I'm always telling people about it to check your stuff out. Um, so has personal finance club opened up any opportunities um, to make extra income or is this more or less just an outlet um, because it really is helping people? Yeah, so when I decided to start Personal Finance Club about a year and a half ago, um, I wasn't really big on Instagram. I had an account mainly just to like share photos with my friends, um, but I really wanted to like spread the message of how to win with money and the things that we should have learned in high school that we most of us didn't. Um, and so I wanted to go where a lot of young people are, which is why I chose Instagram. And then I basically just went hard and learned everything I could about Instagram and learned about stories and posts and hashtags and commenting and figuring out how to like really create a good ecosystem and what kind of content is really connecting with people. So thank you, by the way. Um, and has it opened up any financial opportunities for me? Kind of. Um, basically, every couple of days, some company emails me and offers to give me money to post about their product. Um, I've said no to every single one of those. I've never accepted a penny yet for anything I've posted on Personal Finance Club, uh, mostly because it's just companies that just want me to shill for them, um, and they're in the financial services space. And so if I'm giving information and trying to help people learn about financial, you know, about personal finance, but I'm getting paid by certain companies, I feel like that's a big conflict of interest. So I have personally made a decision not to do that. And I'm very fortunate to be in a financial position where I don't need to take money in order to eat right now. Um, so it's been fun. I've been recognized a few times when I'm out. Um, when I go to a personal finance conference, like tons of people know who I am. Um, so it's definitely, I went from being anonymous to being slightly less anonymous. Um, so that's been fun. Um, and But it hasn't made me any money yet. I've literally made zero and spent a few thousand dollars on things like t-shirts and websites and whatever. Um, so, so far it's just been an altruistic endeavor to help people, but there might be an opportunity at some point for speaking engagements or non-financial services partnerships where I can make some money. Well, I will always tell people to check your content out because I know that your thoughts and ideas on investing are very similar to mine. Um, and so are there any other side hustles or projects that you're working on? 
Yeah, I think that there's another kind of misconception I had when I was younger was that I was going to start a company and sell it and then basically declare victory at life and then you're done. But then what? You know, do you just watch Netflix all day? And so it turns out that I think people like having a little bit of tension or something to be working on and working towards their life, um, which I'm still doing, one of which is Personal Finance Club. I'm also flipping houses with my buddy, one of which is now an Airbnb that we work on. Um, I also have a little website that I built years ago that generates some money, um, and I'm building a new website, a way to play games on a shared board with video chatting with your friends, so you can all enter our same game room and all see each other and all play board games or card games or trivia games all together. Um, that's going to be released pretty soon. I haven't like announced what it's called yet or anything. So yeah, I'm always working on something because I think that's fun and I like doing things that are cool and helping people. Um, and I think that it's like a great way to make money even if you know you have a full-time job and you work on your side passion project. I think that's awesome. Man, flipping houses is something I really want to do. That's awesome. Um, and then you have this new website. It really kind of seems like um, you have a lot of experience in software design, website design, um, something I wish I would have gotten more when I was younger. Um, but uh, these, these experiences that you've had in college and internships have been a major factor in your success. So let's just talk a little bit about FIRE. Um, so FIRE stands for Financially Independent Retire Early. Um, and besides these passions or things you are doing, you are absolutely on fire, what we would say. Um, so how has that been and how has the coronavirus impacted you and your um, portfolio? Yeah, um, I, I didn't really know the term FIRE, financial independence retire early until recently. And so I think I was kind of seeking out financial independence before I really knew what that was called. Um, for sure, being in technology is a very good thing right now. You know, all, everybody needs technology. Every industry needs software, tech, tech websites, apps, whatever. Um, and so people who can build that stuff are in very high demand. So if you're in high school and you're thinking about what career to go into and you want to make money, um, I think that's a great one. Um, how has coronavirus affected me financially? Uh, I guess I think the biggest impacts it can have on people right now are basically health and finance. Health-wise, I'm very healthy, I haven't been sick, I'm still relatively young, so I don't think I'm especially at high risk, but I'm taking it seriously and staying at home, washing my hands, trying to avoid spreading the virus. Um, financially, I'm in pretty good shape. You know, my portfolio has dropped whatever, 15 or 20%, but it's gonna come back. It's just not a big deal that I dropped that much. Um, I'll survive, and I, you know, when people talk about a crash, I think they, think you lose all your money and you're bankrupt, but that's not what happens, right? Like I am not selling anything. Like I have a bunch of stocks in real estate and I still own all of those things. I'm not selling any of it. And so just because the market is down 20% and people are willing to pay me 20% less than they did two months ago, that doesn't affect me because I'm not selling. And by the way, if you look at a longer period of time, the market today is about where it was about eight months ago. You know, in August of last year, it was about where it is today. And in August of 2019, everyone was saying how high the market is and how it's way too high. And now everyone's saying how low it is. And it's just, it's just all short-term volatility nonsense. And if you just stay the course and invest for long periods of time, and if you're retired, you just sell a little bit every year, those big crashes don't really matter because you're just selling a little bit. And whether you're selling a little bit at 20% lower or 20% higher, doesn't really matter. So I'm not sure how much you're able to disclose, um, but did you have any cash on the sidelines? Um, have you been able to add or beef up your portfolio during this time? Yeah, I'm very transparent about how I make decisions about money and investing and basically post my bank account online on my Instagram. Um, and so the answer is no, I did not have cash just sitting there waiting to invest because my cash is already out there working for me. And if I had cash sitting there waiting to invest, um, in my opinion, that's a form of timing the market, which is basically waiting to get in and get out. And it's basically impossible to know when the market is going to go up and down. And so the way to maximize your wealth is to invest early and often and stay the course for many years, decades at a time. And so my money was already in and the fact that it went 20% down doesn't matter because if I had kept that cash on the sidelines, I maybe would have missed 100% run up to wait for a 20% down. And then I might have missed the 20% down because I went back up and I was waiting for 30% down. You know, it's just very hard to know what's going to happen any given day and where those bottoms are. And so, no, I didn't put, throw any money in the market, um, not doing anything differently. The little short-term, I mean, it's a crazy time, don't get me wrong, but the short-term volatility that the market is experiencing is not going to be a big deal over the course of my life. 
Um, so I'm just staying the course. I'm buying and holding. I've made zero trades this year. I plan to make zero trades for the next many years and just let my index funds and real estate keep building wealth for me. Do you follow the plan of always taking out the 4% withdrawal rate or do you um, kind of just follow that based on your need? Yeah, so the 4%, as they call the safe withdrawal rate, is a commonly accepted amount of money that you can take out of your invested portfolio every year and be very likely to ever fully you know, go broke or have your portfolio go to zero. Um, I'm not, you know, it's just not that scientific for me because I've got some real estate like an Airbnb is generating basically enough money for me to live on. I've got some dividends coming in from index funds. I've got some other real estate that's paying money. So I kind of have money coming in every month. That's like enough for me to pay all my living expenses, which is way less than 4%. So I'm living on maybe 1.5 to 2% of my invested portfolio each year. And then the rest I'm just letting grow. And so, um, you know, if I had a hundred percent of it in index funds and was taking out 4% a year, that'd be fine. Um, I, I think I can live comfortably on much less than 4%. So I just choose to have my portfolio grow faster. Um, but more like more so it's just not that like scientific for me because I've got these other sources of income. But yeah, generally speaking, I, I spend less than 2% each year. That's great that you can live off of um, less than 4% of your portfolio. And I'm excited to continue to check your portfolio out uh, in these next couple months. And if you're interested, you should definitely check him out on Instagram. Um, so Jeremy, where can people go specifically to check out your content and just really learn more about you? Yeah, so most of the magic happens on my Instagram account, at Personal Finance Club. The logo looks like this. I also have a website, personalfinanceclub.com. I have a YouTube, Personal Finance Club. There's a Facebook, Personal Finance Club. Uh, yeah, that's where I'm, where I'm making the magic happen. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Jeremy has had some extremely um, great success on Instagram with over 70,000 followers. Uh, so the last thing I want to do today on our interview is, and I've done this with all my other guests so far, I'm going to ask five quick questions that you have to give me a one word or quick response to. Are you ready? Okay, I'll do my best. <laughs> all right, let's go. Your favorite aspect of your side hustle? Um, challenge. Who has been your greatest mentor or influence on your life? Jack Bogle, the founder of Vanguard. One thing that not too many people know about you. Um, I used to be able to run very fast. I ran a half mile in a minute and 49 seconds in college. I still hold a school record at the University of Michigan for track. The best thing to do or see in San Diego? The beaches. And last, your favorite thing to do in your spare time? Play beach volleyball on the beach. Those were great answers, Jeremy. Um, I even fact-checked before you said it because I knew you were a good runner at Michigan, so I figured it would probably come up, and that is correct. He is a record holder at Michigan, so it's pretty impressive. Um, I am a Penn State fan, though, just so you know. I hope there's no hard feelings. Um, I kind of just want to give you the floor, Jeremy. Um, you know, share anything you wanted about yourself or just your overall message um, to anyone who might be listening to this. Sure, I'll just end with my two rules of personal finance club. That's how to build wealth. Rule number one is to live below your means. And rule number two is to invest early and often. If you do those two things, you will be wealthy. If you don't, you will stay broke. Those are two really important things. And I hope even if you don't get anything else out of this, I hope that you um, can take those two things to heart. I'll make sure I post them in the um, description below. Um, Jeremy, once again, thank you so much for your time. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing um, him and don't forget to check him out. Make sure you follow him on Instagram at Personal Finance Club. Um, and if you're interested in being featured on Gym Class Finance, please reach out to me or I'll reach out to you. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, it's that simple.